Um, for those of you who are observant, you will notice one thing about the Foreign Secretary, must have been Lohman and myself, as diplomats, we only get to read off of what we were told to say, which has been approved by our capitals as the official policy. Uh, we don't get to make things up, but if you notice Tariq, when he got up here as a retired ambassador, no notes, he spoke what was on his mind, um, and he doesn't have to worry about it, but uh, um, that's just, I will just say I'm looking forward to those days. <laughs> he was on my mind. Morning, uh, thank you all very much for coming, and, uh, and I'd like to thank our hosts, the National Bureau of Asian Research and the Independent University, Bangladesh, and the think tank that you run, uh, for inviting me here today. Um, one of the reasons many of you are here today is to explore avenues for cooperation between Bangladesh and its regional partners as South Asia as a whole transitions to a more sustainable energy posture. These avenues can lead to increased regional energy trading, shared development of innovative technologies, or any other number of solutions. We need to collectively assess renewable and clean energy resources across the region to determine what makes the most sense for the people of South Asia. Another reason we're here today is because the world's fossil fuel supply is finite. And despite the industry's ongoing transition to clean energy, fossil fuels may be in short supply in the coming years. And it underscores the urgency in advancing sustainable, equitable, and just energy transition to clean and renewable energy resources. This is in the backdrop of a situation where we have energy insecurity. Uh, as you all know, Russia's invasion of Ukraine last year shocked the energy market in Bangladesh and around the world. And countries have become acutely aware of their dependency on foreign sources of fuel. The impact of that one act of aggression, a clear violation of international law, has shown a light on the interconnectedness of the global energy supply. And here I would like to publicly congratulate and recognize the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina for her public recognition in Japan that Russia's aggression in Ukraine was a violation of the UN Charter. But the lesson we take away from this is clear. Russia has shown the world that it will hold the rest of the world hostage on energy to achieve its objectives. All nations, therefore, must develop a plan to solidify their energy security based on a diversified portfolio of resources, a combination of imported and domestic energy. And Bangladesh is fortunate to have a domestic supply of natural gas, and I'm proud to say that U.S. businesses have been instrumental in allowing Bangladesh to utilize these resources to drive its remarkable economic development over the last two decades. But as I mentioned before, these supplies, even the gas here in Bangladesh, are not infinite. And while Bangladesh may soon find more gas in new locations, eventually those too will run out. Renewable resources are the key to this energy transition for Bangladesh, for South Asia, and for the world. Finding ways to harness solar, wind, geothermal, hydro, and other energy sources is the path to energy security and needed to support the continued economic growth and sustainable development of Bangladesh and all countries in South Asia. So to help, um, and as Roy has already explained, um, my government has established Clean Edge, the enhancing development of, and growth through Clean Energy Asia to work with the private sector, international financial institutions, and like-minded governments to support and accelerate Asia's clean energy transition. And I'm pleased that we have so many dedicated professionals from the region here today with us, representing the technical, financial, legal, and policy expertise needed to drive this transition. I think you all know better than I the challenges we face as we move forward. We have to find effective means to decarbonize our existing economic infrastructure. We need to figure out how to integrate intermittent energy resources into national grids, which are already struggling to keep up with demand. 
We need to develop abundant supplies of cleaner fuel sources, such as green hydrogen. We need to ensure that countries have access to finance for clean and renewable energy technologies. And we also need to push forward on negotiating regional energy trading agreements where politics may trump economic advancement. And those are just easy problems to solve. As I look at Bangladesh and I envision this country's transition, I'm heartened by a recent conversation I had. During my last trip to Washington, I met with a Blackstone portfolio company that's interested in developing solar energy here in Bangladesh. In case you're unfamiliar with, Bank with Blackstone, it's the world's largest alternate asset manager with a, nearly a trillion dollars in assets and investments around the world. Let me repeat that, one trillion dollars of investment, or I guess to translate that turns into one lot per dollars, um, which is a lot of money. Um, and this trillion dollar American business is fighting for an opportunity to invest in renewables here in Bangladesh, the same way other American companies did a generation ago to build and to develop Bangladesh's natural gas industry. And so when the government of Bangladesh says they want more U.S. private investment, what I say is, you got a great opportunity here. You should do everything possible to get Blackstone to invest here. If a firm with a trillion dollars, with one lot per dollars in assets, tastes success in this market, imagine what will follow. Of course, the opposite is also true. One of this com company that has one lot per dollars of investment has a frustrating experience here and decides to take their investment elsewhere. But for Bangladesh to achieve a just energy transition, it will take contributions from government, private sector, and civil society. It would require good policies in place to incentivize smart investments in cross-border electricity trade, privatization of other performing state-owned assets, adoption of new technology, and a continual phasing out of the most damaging fossil fuel power generation facilities. This won't happen overnight. It'll take years to accomplish. But we can accomplish it faster if we work together through initiatives like Clean Edge Asia. Thank you all very much for being here. I wish you a very successful conference. Thank you.